Okay, we are continuing Aeneas' speech. He is talking to his buddies, trying to make them feel better about their miserable experience thus far. Per varios casus, per totam discrimina rerum tendemus in latium, sedes ubi fata quietas ostendent, illic fas regina resurgere troiae. Okay. Oh, this isn't so bad. Look, we have a prepositional phrase here. Per varios casus. Noun adjective bear there. Per tot discrimina rerum. Oh, look, we've got another. Let's see. Another prepositional phrase. Discrimina is the noun that is the object of pair. Rerum is a genitive noun talking about discrimina. Then we have our verb. And we have another prepositional phrase talking about where they're heading to. Pay attention to who the subject of tendum mus is. Sedes ubi fata quietas ostendent. Okay, sedes. Ooh, one of those ambiguous forms. Is it nominative? Is it accusative? We know it's plural. We're going to have to hold that in our heads and see. Ubi fata. Okay, nominative or accusative. Uh, not quite sure yet. So we have two ambiguous forms. Ambiguous forms, but quietas helps to resolve that because quietas is an adjective and it is feminine plural, which is great because sedes is feminine, so we know that these guys go together and quietas is accusative, which means that sedes must be accusative. And since we know that sedes quietas is accusative, that's the direct object, that means that fata is most likely the nominative subject of the verb, which we're going to get to right here. Ascendant. Here we are. Ubi. Fata. Ascendant the sedes quietas. That makes sense because fata usually does stuff in the Aeneid. It's usually the subject as opposed to the direct object. Fate is going around ruining everybody's plans. Illic fas regina resergere troiae. Fas means it is lawful. Illic in that place. It is lawful for this uh, to happen. For the accusative to do the infinitive, and Troy is modifying that. That was a short one, yay. <laughs>